Hello and welcome back to VFX with Nitro. Today we're going to be exploring using the quantize node and a couple different types of scaling nodes. Alright, and I apologize about this sound or have this issue with me sound on this channel. I was exploring a different way of doing it anyway. You don't want to hear the excuses, you just want the product. So let's get into uh, talking about this. Let's first see what we're going to make today. So today's goal is going to be this. We're going to go from this to this to this. And as you can see, the goal is pretty simple. We're going to be taking a, a, a kitty cat and turning it into this pixelated mess and then turning it back into a kitty cat. So how are we going to go about this? Well, let's take a look. All right. So um, over here, we have uh, several types of transform nodes. First thing we need to talk about is uh, the transform node and the pros and cons of it. Um, we're going to be looking at the transform node, we're going to be looking at um, the reformat node, which is another way of scaling something, and we're going to be looking at the resize node, which is this one that a lot of people don't really understand. And the goal of today is to be talking about what this node is going to be good for and why it's better than the other nodes for this particular job. All right, so again, transform, reformat, resize. We can do what we're trying to do with all three of these nodes but only the resize node is the optimal or the proper thing to use and i'm going to warn you if you try doing some of what we're going to do today um on your own you're going to probably run into some potential issues so here we are in natron and uh the first thing i want to point out is that i have this set up to a square of 256 by 256 with a ramp node creating a gradient from the uh, left side of the of the you know left side of the box all the way to the right side of the box and um, that's all it's doing it all right and well uh, the reason I'm using a 256 by 256 uh, scale image or side pixel image is because we're got, what we're going to be doing is eventually increasing the size which is why we have these transform nodes and these various things but first let's talk about these nodes so everybody we all know what the transform node is all right we're gonna first try it. what we're gonna do is we're going to shrink this node well actually we're not going to shrink the node first we're going to talk about the quantize node so what the quantize node is is it's a node that can change the amount of bits per channel that you have on an image by default you have typically uh, if you're dealing with dealing with photos, you're dealing with something that's 256 uh, colors per channel, and you have three basic channels. So you have red channel, you have the green channel, and you have the blue channel. All right, and then if you deal with transparency, you got the alpha channel. But that means you're dealing with eight bits per channel. All right, and that gives you a total of 24 bits, which means it's a 24 bit image all right that's a color depth for the whole thing all right what the quantize node does is we can reduce this all right and with uh, up here you can see i have it set to colors two and it's set to uh, i'm actually going to turn off the this dithering for the moment and i'm going to it's going to reduce it from 256 colors per channel down to two at this point because that's what i have set here i can go all the way up i can bring this all the way up to 256 colors per channel this only goes up to 256 this the quantized node does not go above 24 bits and even if you push it up past it all the way down to two which is black and white two colors all right um so we're gonna what happens if we leave this without any dithering with the bayer pattern on here and we enable this quantized node we go from this gradient to this icky basic black and white. We, when it gets to the, it starts off black. When it gets to the fifty point percent gray, it turns to white. All right. So then, 
what's how, this isn't any good uh, from a standpoint of two colors. Can we make this look better? And that is where dithering comes in. Dithering is this concept of, of using these patterns, these different types of pixel patterns to uh, create the illusion of there being more colors than there actually are. Even though there's still only two colors, we can sort of simulate the look of uh, there being a gradient. We saw a gradient there. So if I go to here and I go to our first pattern, it's called order bear two by two. And when we do this, it creates this two by two pattern. And this is the one where we're actually going to be focusing mainly on bear patterns today because um, you, people who have been dealing with cameras, uh, if you deal with raw footage, you deal with a thing called the Bayer pattern. And it's actually this very same thing that we're going to be using here, except for th these are what are called recursive Bayer patterns in this. Um, so this first one is a two by two. And what this means is, is that um, this each Bayer, Bayer pixel or each Bayer pattern, the Bayer pattern is made up of a four by four sample, okay? If we zoom in on this, we have here, we go from white to a white, three pixels of white and one pixel of black. And then it goes and it repeats the pa pattern and it goes one pixel black, three pixels white, one pixel black, three pixels white. And that's what a two by two Bayard pattern is, all right? It does this, it uses this four, uh, two pixel wide by two pixel high pattern to create this, Bayer pat or to create the gradient all right so with this two by two the amount of colors that we wind up with or potential sh uh, steps of gradient we have we have our white we have our white and all white but one black pixel then we have a, a a combination of white and black pixels two white and two black pixels then we have three black pixels and one white pixel and then we have black and that creates recreates our gradient um, so, uh, if we shift this from two by two pattern to four by four pattern, what it's done now, as it says that instead of using two pixels for, for creating our gradient, we're going to use four pixels for creating this gradient. So it, it increases that pattern so that we have a much bigger sample. So the distance, we have one black pixel here followed by three pixels of white going vertically and three pixels of white going horizontally. And then it does it and it creates a, a, a halfway point, another pattern at halfway point, and it keeps doing this all the way across. And it's actually just, it's a sort of a recursive version of the same thing. And we're going to get into why this is and how this is useful in a wee bit. Um, I just want to bring it up. So we get more shades we've got actually instead of having what looked like uh basically three patterns between our two colors uh white and black we wind up with basically 14 different patterns here all right is it 14 excuse me 15 patterns here 15 different patterns here so there's 15 pattern different potential patterns here and then if we go up to the eight by eight we have um, we've created this, but it's doing the same thing, but with eight pixels vertical and eight pixels horizontal and then creating this. And what this is doing is it's doing the same type of pattern, but from with, with by sampling it, it gets, uh, we have, we've basically, we're, 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 we've run out of pattern basically in here. So it's not looking any better than this. And it really, honestly, I got to say, um, from the standpoint of converting to a Bayard pattern, eight by eight is pretty much as far, usually as far as a lot of people take it. Uh, but it's actually kind of disappointing. I really like it. If we could, you could take this even further. You could do a 16 by 16, and then you could go up even one step further to a 32 by 32. Um, and it will become, this is actually going to be a limitation on why we can't use this on our kitty cat in a little while, it saddens me. We're gonna actually fake it for, for the Bayer pattern because the Bayer pattern is actually the best pattern we can use for the, turning the kitty back into the kitty. All right, so the, then, then we have these other ones here that are, are actually far more interesting because from this point of getting more color. If we can get, we have this void cluster, which is this, is a, creates a much more even gradient using um, these white, from white to black using the patterns. 
Um, and it works pretty darn well. We wind up with something that is visibly, it looks like a gradient fairly to the eye. And if we zoom out a bit, it almost looks, you know, like, uh-oh. Oh, phew. I thought my video dropped out. Um, well, video seemed to have lagged for a minute. Um, I just want to make sure I am seeing this. Okay, good. It's it's back. All right. So um, vo this is void cluster four, 14 by 14, and we also have void cluster 25 by 25, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to be using void cluster 25 by 25, and then we're going to fake it with a bare 8 by 8, but we're going to get into some of the theory behind how this is working. And then the last thing is the most useless of the bunch, which is random. Random is okay if you're dealing with um, stuff and you want to get colors that are very similar to one another to blend together in a very random pattern. But it really, really breaks down if you're dealing with... Um, th it's really good. Random is really good if you have colors that are very similar to one another. It's really, really bad if you're dealing with things that are very contrasty because it stands out like a sore thumb. We can see, we see, excuse me, we can see something that looks like a gradient, but it is not a gradient. It's really obvious patterns of, we see very obvious black and white pixels and clusters of stuff, but it's randomly generated. Anyway, we're gonna switch back to, for right now, our ordered bear two by two. And the reason we want to talk about our ordered Bayer 2x2 is we want to talk about these types of, of scaling nodes, all right? And the first one, everybody everybody here is probably familiar with the transform node and the reformat nodes because they're, they're the ones that everybody thinks of the most often. But nobody ever, the, the most misunderstood and misused node is that resize node. And today we're going to find out why the resize node is actually the best node of the bunch. All right, let's start off with the transform node. So the goal here, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this Bayer pattern, this two by two Bayer pattern from two colors back into four. Well, we're going to turn it into five colors. All right. Um, we started with 250, a gradient of 256 colors. We're going to turn it. We've turned it down to two colors. Now we're going to turn it back up to five colors. And you're saying five colors. That's weird. All right. And you can pretty much figure out where the colors are. We have white, we have black, and then we have grays in between. So how are we going to do this? Well, the way we're going to start this is we're going to scale this down. We're going to take this, and this first transform node scales everything to half its size. All right? So if I, um, if I enable this node and scale it down to half its size, we can see we've suddenly wound up with Bum, 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 five colors. We have white, 75% gray, 50% gray, 25% gray, and black. Okay. Well, basically, we've turned it to four or, or to two and a half bits or four and a half colors, if that makes sense. It's actually five colors. Um, and the reason is, is black doesn't get added into this because it's not, it's what we've done is by doubling our resolution or, or wait, oh no, I'm hoping by having our resolution, we've taken our Bayer pattern and we've used what's called super sampling and super sampling is it, it took those, that, that four by four block. Okay. And it took that, it, it took the two high and the two wide and it, sampled all four of them and it shrunk it all mushed it all together into one color and it said of those four colors that make up that square what is the average color and the answer is well in one case we wound up with 75 percent gray the other one where that was three whites one black means that we wind up with we have 75 percent white what a 25 percent black which means we wind up with a 75 percent gray obviously two white two black 50 percent 50 50 so we wind up with 50 percent gray here one white three black 75 percent black 25 percent white means we wind up with a 25 percent gray now this is also i want to point out before we go further that this is also handled by the type of filtering on this node, all right? And it's going to become the problem. Let, let's first scale this back up. So right now, the problem is, is we've half the size of our image, which isn't very good because 
It's small. It's not useful. So we want to bring it back up because we want to preserve it. Well, now we're going to run into the first problem. When we enable a rescale node uh, or use a transform node and transform it to double its size, which is what it did, we said double it to, to two, we wound up back where we started. We didn't actually retain that color information. And this is why we can't use the transform node by default. Transform node is, we don't want to lose pixel information when you're scaling it. It's designed for animation. Um, so you don't want to scale it because if you, that would mean that if you're doing an animation and you scaled something down when you restored it to its full size, it would, it would disappear. You'd lose information. That's not what the transform nodes are about. They're designed for animation. That being said, there is a way we can make the transform node work for our purposes. And that is to use this thing called the disk, disk cache node. And if we take it and insert that disk cache node in after we scale it down, then we cache the result of that. And then we take that and scale the result of that back up. Bum, bum, bum. We wind up with what is a, a a scaled up version of what we start uh, of what we scaled down and so it does the job but we've used three nodes uh for something that should require less nodes so it doesn't seem very efficient and the other problem that we run into is that means that if we do an entire animation with this or an entire video that this cache node has to cache every single frame that it's doing. That's a horrible waste of resources. So I'm going to call this one not the ideal. We don't want to be using that. All right, let's go over to reformat. Reformat, a lot of people know. Um, reformat is exactly what it says. It reformats it. Um, but reformat node has, has some flaws to it. Reformat, let's first look at it. All right, we're going to... We've done what we've done here is we've done the same thing. We've said it. We're telling it to scale it down to to half its size, 0. 0.5. All right. So we enable it. Uh, notice though, instead of rescaling, one of the things transform node did by default is it scaled it to the center of the image, whereas the resize scaled it down to the corner, which is where the zero point for an image is. So in already we're one step ahead because that means that we can rescale almost anything to any other size. So this is actually, a, in a lot of ways, a better node for doing this. And we get the result we want. We get our, well, our four colors or our four, three additional colors. All right. And then we're going to use a second node. What I've done here is I'll, all I've done is I've told it to reformat it back up to its original 256 by 256. And the reason we're doing that is because I don't want it later on when we, if we start doing the reverse and sort of scaling things down, scaling them up. I don't want to have to scale this. I don't have to want to change this, which we would have had to do with the transform node, which is a pain in the rumpus. Anyway. So we're going to enable, we're going to enable this reformat node and lo and behold, reformat does the job automatically. But there's a problem with the reformat node. The reformat node, by the way, all of these, I pointed out that there's this thing called filtering. All right. And you'll notice that the filtering, um, I've, I, I'm currently looking at our, our reformat node, this box filtering here. And I have, you'll notice I have it set to, uh, to box on all of these nodes. And the reason is what box does is it looks at the entire unit as a box of pixels. Everything within the two by two box, half of it, it, or twice its size, we're taking that two by two block and converting it perfectly. It's not considering any of the stuff around it when it does its scaling. So that's what box does. Box keeps everything, so uh, we get these perfect steps, and that's going to be you. That's important for when we get into doing these higher level bare patterns um, with the four by four and so forth. Create more colors in the future. It create prevents artificial colors from being introduced, which is not what we want to do. Um, at least not in theory. You could do it. It's up to you. But this is ideal. We're trying to keep it perfect for the sake of this. All right, so we've done it. We scaled it up, but what's the problem with this? Well, um, part of our, our, our reformat node is that it has one. It, these are the filter types it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten ways we can rescale this. We can do a lot of things. And you'll notice here that we're missing actually some of what I would call the 
upscaling or Lancros, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, there's no Lancros in here, which means if we wanted to use the reformat now to upscale our, our image, it would be the it would be we're stuck with well okay we could upscale it with something else but from the standpoint of resizing or rescaling things reformat node isn't the best thing reformat the real purpose of reformat is is if you're starting with something that's uh uhd and you want to take it from uhd and scale it down or 8k and scale it down to 4k or to 2k or something like that reformat node is really about taking your your, your final destination or what your final thing is and converting it down to a size that's what reformat's really good for if you want to do a lot of really upscaling all right and i'll use that and upscaling that's where the resize node comes in and the resize node the reason there's a reason that the resize node is actually better and i'm going to show you it right here i'm going to before we go any further what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this reformat node um and i'm going to just duplicate this over here uh and i'm going to take our resulting ramp for a second and I'm going to just, instead of setting, taking it to half its size, I'm going to take it to twice its size. Okay. So we're going to scale it up to two. All right. Just make sure we're, so, so now this is a 512 by 512. And then I tell it, I want to reformat it to our thing. And you'll notice that this is a problem. There's a problem in, in this is that it, um, Oh, well, it reform. Uh, no, we're not going to call it a problem. It did the job. It, it reformatted it. But what one of the things we'll see here is when it scaled it up, it scaled everything. And we have Natron has to render this this node. It's rendering this node. Um, if we go through, um, if we wanted to uh, view the outside of this. Uh, if we crop this or, or did other things, it's rescaled that node completely, and it's it, 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 the including the ROD, the region of de definition, up to two fifty six by or, or up to uh, five twelve by five twelve. All right, so let's go over to resize. I don't want to dwell on that too much because our resize node is the one we're going to be using. All right, so let's first take a look at our resize node. When we tell it to resize, you're going to notice something weird is going to happen. The resize node didn't actually resize our image. It kept our original 256 area, our format stayed 256 by 256. Well, that's interesting. That may not have been what you want, but that's actually useful. It means that all it did is it used its resource to scale the, the image. And why? That's interesting we no huh huh well that's very no huh i'm not gonna all right it's so it scaled it up but it you can see that it left it at the 256 by 256 on our final thing so we didn't scale it down and if we go through the reformat node here i believe we might crop it yeah it cropped it out anyway it wound up with something different. It doesn't do exactly the same thing. And this is useful. It means that we're not scaling things up. So when Natron is calculating it out, it isn't um, calculating, it doesn't have to recalculate the entire thing um, for the purposes of rendering to our viewer node. All right. So then when we scale it back down, you'll see that I, again, I'm using the 256 to two by 256. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait oh, I'm, City, city me, we're still scaling down. I'm like, that didn't work the way I expected. Here we go. All right, we scaled it back up. And again, resize node did exactly what reformat node did, but it did it actually better. And the reason it's doing, there's two things that it does better. One thing it does better is, of course, it has filters. Look at this. We have, instead of 10 filter methods, we have 18. If we, dis if we don't include 19, if we include default, which is... I think it's cubic by default. Uh, which is cubic even in here? Yeah, cubic's in here, so it doesn't really matter. You get get redundancy anyway. 
But we also wound up with Lankzos, uh, um, which is a is used for upscaling. So if you want to do upscaling of your, your images, Lankos is a better format for, for doing what you want. And um, I don't know how long we've been... Oh, we've been recorded for 26 minutes. All right, so... Um, so here we've gone. We've done this. We've we've done this. All right. So you're saying, well, what's the point of what? What else does it do? It gives us more bayer pa or more patterns for super sampling and resizing and so forth. But we're going to be sticking with box. I just wanted you to let, to let you know that's one of the pros to to the resize node. The second thing it does is it doesn't change the resolution. All right. When we go to to um to our quantize node here and switch this to a four by four pattern. One of the things we're seeing here is that um, the, the node we've created the four or the, the three additional colors, but we're winding up with a pattern in between and it's an additional two by two pattern when we did the four by four, because what it did is it took that four by four pattern and shrunk that down to half its size, which turned it into a two by two of the other colors of those of that goes between those other colors. That so this raises this interesting point that if we can if we can do that, that means that this can actually work in a different way. Instead of shrinking down, we can scale up, then quantize, and then turn it back. So we're going to disable this resize node here and up here after our ramp node we're going to put in a resize node all right and instead of scaling this resize node down we're going to scale it up so we're going to change it from uh we want to change it to scale and we want to scale it up to twice its size all right and when we go up to twice its size, all right, we have twice the size. So it's now a 256 by 250, or excuse me, it's a, now a 512 by 512. And this is what I was telling you about the fact that it doesn't resize all the information. You'll see here, even though we've resized it, it's still a 256 by 256 image, even though the background image, the actual image information for the resize is now 512 by 512. It's virtually bigger, but it hasn't actually, unlike the reformat node, which let's go back here, which we did the scale over here. Let's look over here. This actually resize or reformat, excuse me, actually created a, a 512 by 512 for our region of definition, whereas, or for our, excuse me, for our rendering, for our view, whereas our resize node just scaled up the information and just is showing what is available in our viewport, which is really, really useful because if you made this super duper big, which we're going to be doing in a wee bit, this resize node is going to handle a lot better inside of Natron. Um, so, okay. So what does that mean from the standpoint of where we're going with this? Well, when we shrink this back down, let's go back here. Um, let's go back to two by two. All right. So, We've doubled its size with the resize node um, to two by two. Uh, we keep it two by two and we scale it back down and we wind up with the same thing as we wound up before. It's two pixels wide by two pixels uh, tall. All right, we've only doubled it. We've, we've doubled it. And when we doubled it and then Bayer patterned it, we wound up with basically this pattern here, which we can see is the same basic pattern, but when we scaled it down to half its size, we came up with the exact same result as is when we scaled the thing up. So it basically did the same thing, except we actually have a new thing here. Let's let's look at something else here. Um, if we did the same thing from the opposite with the resize, the resize node here where we take it from half the size up, it seems to, oops, I deleted. I was like, that's weird. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to disable that. I was like, okay, you can see that the resize node um, here. Um, ah, well, uh, we want to, excuse me. We want to disable that. There we go. 
All right, so this resize node scales it up. This resize node scales it down. We wind up with the exact same pattern. Um, and the thing that I want to bring up to your attention here is that we're getting those five colors. If we go to our uh, quantize node and shift this off of back to none and change our colors up to five, this, let's actually copy the, whoops, why didn't that work? Alt copy, there we go. I'm going to take this right into our, our quantize node, all right, or into our uh, ramp node. And then we're going to re-enable the, the resize node and then go down and look at the output here. So, whoop, wait a minute, this resize node, oh, you can see we have a problem here. The filter was still set to default, which isn't giving us proper. We want to box it. There we go. I don't know if you'd seen it. Let's go back here. Default. You can see here's a problem. This is an artificial color. This isn't what we want. We want to get that so that it's pure. We want those steps to transform. We don't want the, the computer creating artificial colors. You can if you want, but we're trying to keep those pure gradients, bare patterns, pure. Um, so, all right, so we've quantized it. So here we've taken that scaled up one and converted it into five colors. And if we look at it over here, wait a minute, why? Oh, um, hold on. We didn't do that quite right. I had my other one, quantized one, should be two colors. All right, so there we go. Wait a minute. And of course we want it to be Bayard pattern. All right. So, yeah. All right. So here's our Bayard pattern. Quantize. We bring it over. This is what we wind up with as our result. We get the three additional colors, which if we look at this, which is just the quantized nose without any dithering set to five colors, it's exact same thing, just a different spicing. Um, and that's important to understand because we've basically what we've done is we've with this resize node, we have basically doubled our colors. We have taken it up to four bits or, or to two colors, two bits per channel. Um, if you go from one bit, which is two colors, to two bits, you wind up with four colors because there's four total combination co uh, of colors. So we've taken up to four bits plus a half an extra bit for this black color. So it's four, four colors plus one. And to prove this further, what we're going to do is we're going to take this up to, um, we're going to take the dither pattern up to, from ordered Bayer 2x2 two two, up to ordered Bayer 4x4, four four. all right? And when we go here, we can see that pattern again. Here's what color one, color one is white, color two is gray, color three is 50% gray, I should say it's 75% gray, 50% gray, 25% gray, black, and then we have these Bayer patterns in the middle. Well, and that's because we're doing an order bear four by four. Well, here's the trick to the four by four. Whatever you see this number here is the four by four. If we scale it up by that number as well, we effectively are increasing it to that bit depth. Or I think it is, or we're multiplying it. We're not, we're adding, yeah, I think it's that bit. It's eight bits per channel or, or not eight bits per channel, but eight uh, eight. Well, it's uh, uh, basically it works out to 64, uh, 64 colors. Uh, or actually, in this case, four by four is four times four, which is 16 colors. All right. So four, you take the four, you multiply it times the four and we wind up with 16 new colors. And can we can we prove this? Well, yes, we can prove this by taking our sample here all right let's get our uh quantize here we want our resize here and we take this and we multiply this to four times its size by four times its size so it matches the bayer pattern okay and we wind up with 17 colors all right it's 16 colors four by four plus black all right it created all these steps in between plus black so how can I prove this? I go over to this other one where we're just doing the color quantized colors without, and we change it up to 17 colors. Oops, 16, 17 colors. And when I hit one to view it, lo and behold, 
we wind up with the exact same color pattern. Hmm. Well, that means if we keep going with this concept of scaling and dithering, we can take our quantized pattern from 4x4 four four to 8x8, eight eight, and we wind up back in the situation where we have, we're back to another two pixel uh, or, or bare two pattern for every one of those colors. Well, that means all we have to do to get more colors out of this is take this resize node and change it so that it's an 8x8 eight pattern. So if I take this from the scale here and I go to 8x8, eight eight, dun, 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 we wind up with 65 colors, not 64 colors. Remember, it's whatever the next level is up. up eight times eight is what? 64, I believe. Let's double check it. Pull up the your calculator. Eight times eight. 64 colors. That's our color count. All right. So this raises the question. All right. If we got uh, eight, if whoopsie, I made my <laughs> calculator huge uh, on my other screen. All right. So we have 64 colors here. Well, this is really interesting because this means if we took it up to a bare pattern of 16 by 16, which would be the next level up above this, we could get more colors per channel, right? So let's take that if we took it from, actually, we would take it up, I believe it would be um, 8 by 8. So we double it again. We have to double it at uh, resolution. So 16 times 16 will give us a total of 256 colors, which means if we had the ability to do a Bayer pattern of 16 by 16, we shouldn't be able to go from our grayscale all the way down to one to single pixels and all the way back up to 256 shades of gray so we can restore it but we have a problem here our bear pan pattern has fallen short we've run out of bear potential we can't do it the next thing up we can do is avoid cluster at 14 by 14. all right well let's try avoid cluster at 14 by 14. we take it 14 by 14. oh and before we do that let's just verify 8 by 8 64 colors if we take this up and change these colors to it's actually not 64 it's 65. If we change this from 17 colors to 65 colors and we go and look at this quantized node that is set to 65 colors we go over to it and all we see that we wind up with the exact same colors it's just shifted over we, we, the, there's more black and white because they're even steps whereas on our on our uh bare reproduced thing or version it the white and black are trimmed a little bit this is why i said when we we're going to convert you i'm sure you're all seeing where we're going with this all right so let's go back to our void cluster or to our excuse me to our quantized node here and change it from eight or about eight to a fourteen by fourteen. Well, let's see what's. Let's do our math. Fourteen by fourteen is not going to get us. Fourteen times fourteen would only get us one hundred and ninety-six colors. You know what? I don't want to go to fourteen by fourteen. Let's see what's our next one that we can do beyond that. We have void cluster twenty-five by twenty-five. Well, that exceeds our sixteen by sixteen, which will get us back up to two fifty-six. So if we go. Um, if we say, well, but there is a problem here. We're using a, a, a non-standard bear pattern, and so what, or a non-standard pattern. We're using a, something that is not a, a cyclical, repetitive pattern. So we're not going to wind up with pure colors. Sadly, this is an unfortunate side effect. So this is why I say it's going to be close. Um, it's not going to be perfect. If we take it up, our next size up from it is 25 by 25. So if we go 25 times 25, we'll wind up with 625 colors per barrier pixel. Oh, that exceeds our original. So we can actually use that to recreate. We should wind up with something pretty darn close. But that means we have to take our scale and double it for, to 25 by 25. So that means this X has to be 25 by 
25 to get there. And let's see if we get it. Lo and behold, there I'm seeing a pretty darn close to accurate representation of our original ramp. That's our original ramp. And this is our converted version. And unfortunately, because of that, we can't do, we can't quantize up to 620, a uh, level of 625. I mean, we could set this this quantized to 625 from here. Let's try it. 625 colors. So uh, it's just going to go up to 256, um, which it looks pretty much the same. So we've created the pattern. Hmm. Well, what does this mean to our, the size of our image? Let's look at it from the standpoint of actually what we have here. Um, if we go back up to our resize node up here, and we go and look at that ROD, we have, we went from 256 to, whoa, 64,000, or 6,400, excuse me, 6,400 pixels across by 6,400 pixels, just to get, to turn it back into a 256 uh, cutters per channel, or shades per channel. So does this actually work? That's a big question, right? All right, let's try it. Let's take and bring in da, 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 the Pussycat. We'll go over. I've got my episode 15 over here. And I've got Rosie ready to drag into here. And we drag Rosie in. And she's been put on channel 2. All right. There's Rosie. And Rosie's huge. We can't use Rosie. So the first thing we're going to use is that we're going to take one of these reformat nodes. Um, or we'll just put a reformat. Reformat node and we're going to set it so that we're going to fit it and i'm going to set tell the reformat that instead of 640 by 480 i'm going to tell it i'm going to make it a 256 by 256 keeping it sideways okay that way it'll fit into what we have already and we don't have to change anything all right and because we don't want to crash the computer <laughs> if we took that original 2000 by 2000 think about what we're talking about we're talking about multiplying both dimensions by 24 2000 times 24 would be a very big number it's possible but we're going to be dealing with huge numbers we could we could make this bigger but i didn't want to take it too big and i also don't want it the computer spending all the time resampling it all right Let's go back to a quantized node, um, set it from our two color ordered 25 by 25 back to our ordered bear two by two. We'll pipe that into here, into our reformat node, and we're going to resize it back. And oh, whoa, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. It's not doing what we want here. We need to change this for to from a format we need to switch it so that instead of square two by two we need to do it to a physical size which we're going to say um we want to preserve the parallax all right and so by preserving the parallax or, or uh, it, it preserve that's basically preserving the aspect ratio so it kept the width 256 by 256 which Wound up, this says it's 256 by 200. This says it's 256 by 144. I, we're going to just assume it's close enough. That's good enough. So here we go. We have, this is what our pussycat looks like at the beginning. Very similar to what we saw. We can see that if we go to R, we have black and white with our Bayer pattern. We go to G, we see our black and white Bayer pattern. And we go to blue, we see our black and white with bare pattern. And we, we go back, we see the RGB and then the colors, which means that we also get the secondary colors. So where red and green mix, we wind up with yellow. Where um, blue and green mix, we wind up with cyan. And where red and blue mix, oh, I don't know if we have any magenta in here. Oh, yes, there we go. Oh, no, that's not magenta. I don't see any magenta in here, but that's okay. We get the point. It works. We're seeing that it's, it's doing the correct thing. All right. So then we say to ourselves, all right, we want to take this to our resize node. Um, 
we're going to take our resize. We're gonna we have it at two by two, so we want to take our resize node number three and set this back to <laughs> two by two. All right, we pump that this into our reformat node. Take the output of this, put that into our resize node, and when we convert it into when we resize it, we double its size, then we resize it back down, and lo and behold, we've turned it from a two-bit or two-bit per channel image into a basically we're going to call it five colors or three two and a half bit per channel image which as we go if we go to all we can see we have pure grays and so forth all right let's let's try and re reconstruct this well we already know where the end result is going to go let's we'll take it up one more level so to four by four um so back to this let's take it to here we're going to resize it first things first let's set our quantize from two by two to four by four all right there's our, our four by four and we're seeing the different pattern all right, and then we go to our resize, and we want this, again, the, the scale, that we scale it up, to be the same as whatever our bear, our pattern is going to be. So we say four, not 42. Oh my goodness, that would be bad. Four by four. And lo and behold, there we go. We've converted it to a 16 colors per channel, which um, has given us 16 colors per channel. Which is, I think that's, um, ah, I didn't want to get into, it's a lot of colors. It's it's not tons, but it's better. Um, I think it's like 65,000 colors. Um, so this is a 65,000 color image with no pattern bearing or no bear pattern at the end result. All right. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to obviously skip straight from bear to the void cluster 25 by 25 which means we have to scale this sucker up to 25 times its size and so we're going to do 25 times which has made it incredibly distorted there by 25 times its size and the question is, is at the end do we have what we started with or something very 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 close so we started with uh we're going to view this which is it's a little bit offset but that's okay um so we we we, we started off with this this looks pretty good pretty good we can look at some of the pixels here i don't want to i just am looking at the bottom half of this and then we go over here and we look at it and it looks pretty similar um we i would say that it that's i would say that that's pretty successful um does anybody disagree i'm gonna open this up do people have questions well i should bring this up this is really interesting to note all right and the reason this is good to note and um is because what we've effectively done or what we're, we're, we're proving in here is that if uh, people or there's been a there was a, a an argument a while back about does um can or a um does taking a a 24 or an 8 bit per channel image and but at 4k and scaling it to 1080p which is exa exactly what we're doing here we're, we're basically taking those resolutions while going up to, to 4k do you actually get the equivalent of a 10-bit image? Well, we're starting off with a with a, the equivalent of uh, we 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 are basically getting the equivalent when we double it by doubling its size. We have introduced um, a, a, an exponential value of colors by doing it or by reducing its size. So we do, in fact, add at least. Um, I actually haven't done the math, but it would come out to pretty darn close to getting a 10 bit or, or at least 10 bit per channel and from an 8 bit 4K. So, um, but it's going to be doing it not with a Bayard pattern. It's going to be doing it with probably some form of random pattern or a void cluster. 
and you can see by the way if we do this if we look at this you might notice the pattern if we switch this from this to random yeah the pattern you'll notice that the pattern changes quite a bit and um that pattern um that's the problem that we run into is, is that um, when you change your pattern when you change your ba your your color changing pattern you and resample it changes how the the results are going to look so you can you, you can get something that effectively has more colors but unless you use the proper um, pattern pixel pattern conversion um, so like a, a void cluster or a, a, a an ordered bear you're going to wind up with something that while it has more pixels per, per, per channel you're really not getting all of the benefits you're not net guaranteed to get all the benefits because um if it's doing random the problem with photons is you can't dictate that oh land in a bear pattern or land in a in a um when when it's creating the 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 eight bit image, you can't tell light those photons to land in a specific any one of the pattern patterns. They're going to be landing in a random pattern. So what you're going to wind up with is something closer to what we have here, which is not quite the whoops, that's not what we want. Um, which is not quite the same. If we go back and forth, this is we can see this is a lot smoother on the on the random than it is when we do the resize. So while people can do that, and it is does work to a degree, um, unless you do it with an ordered Bayer pattern for the rescale, um, uh, with the dithering of it, it, it doesn't do it. But it's useful. It's very interesting. And remember that this also happens every time we double it. If we go from 4K to 8K, we've just doubled that number again. So we've effectively taken it from around 10, 10-ish bits up to almost 12-ish bits. Well, so we get almost all the bits of a 12-bit image. The problem is, is that it really isn't. There's other aspects of it. You have more things to it. But it's fun to play with. And this was an experiment talking about resize nodes, introducing you to reformat node, introducing you guys to the resize node and some of the fun things you can do, and talking about some theory. Anyhow... Uh, we've been going for, where's my time? Holy moly, 53 minutes. I'm done. Oh, we, once more, this, we, the goal was to take it from, you know, from a pussycat down to two pixels and not back up to a pussycat, which we've done. Thanks for watching. Keep on Nitron in. Actually, before we do that, I feel the need to just deal with this in a, in a way. We got to blow it up. And um, with that, we're out of here. Have a great day. Keep all nature on in.